Hello. In 1996, my life was forever changed when after a botched back surgery, I was left with severe chronic pain. This began a cycle that lasted over a decade of fentanyl patch, Neurontin, Methadone, Norco, a myriad of pharmaceuticals that at the height had me over the next decade on 26 different drugs a day. What I was left with was overweight, depressed, unable to work, unable to even drive a car. But more importantly, what I was also left with was chronic pain. Because where opioids are an excellent option for people that are in acute suffering, they are not the best solution for people having chronic suffering such as mine. So I went looking for other solutions. About this time, I met a woman by the name of Kay Cordopassi. And Kay was a self-described wake and baker. Each morning, she would wake up and she would pull out her little pink Hello Kitty pipe and she would have a couple of puffies. <laughs> so I judged Kay very harshly. I saw her as a drug user. But she also told me something very interesting. And that was that she was making pot brownies for her boyfriend who had chronic neck pain. And that he was able to use or eat one of her brownies before bed at night and not have to use any harmful pharmaceuticals to sleep through the night. And that got my interest. Because up to that point, we all had heard the hype around this, but all of a sudden I'm like, there's got to be some science here. So I, I started looking for solutions, and the first thing I did is I went to a doctor in California who was willing to write me a recommendation to use cannabis. And I thought, great, I'm going to go and I'm going to see this doctor, and I'm going to walk out of there with a prescription and know exactly what to do. But instead, what I got was a sheet of paper with a list of dispensaries. And he pointed to one of them, and he said, this is the Nordstrom of dispensaries. So I suggest you go there. Well, I love Nordies. So of course, that's where I headed. So I went over to the dispensary. I stood in line. I walked up to the counter. And I said to the young man behind the counter, now that I know is called a bud tender. And I said, OK, I have chronic pain. What do I use? What do I do? And out from beneath the counter, he pulled a Rice Krispie treat, a bag of caramel corn, and a chocolate brownie. And I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, what do I, how do I use it? What do I take? And he's like, well, I have no idea. You know, I just like this one, and it, you know, it kind of makes me, and I was like, OK, great. This is not science. This is not medicine. I need to go and find out more information. So I then made my next stop was at HempCon. Well, HempCon fulfilled every stereotype that I had <laughs> about <laughs> cannabis. I mean, you had your young ladies with the body paint and the strategically placed pot leaves. You had the I heart vagina signs along the wall. You had the, the deafening boom box, you know, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, boom. And I'm trying to listen to the vendors and I'm asking them questions and they're giving me answers and, and I can't hear anything. But what I also heard while I was there was the same girl in the body paint was treating irritable bowel syndrome with cannabis. You had the person with the chronic pain seeking answers, the social anxiety looking for answers with cannabis. So I thought there's got to be something here, and I'm, since I'm obviously not finding it, I'm going to have to go figure it out myself. So I went next, and I bought a couple of ounces of something called Triple X Chem Dog, and I got it at the granny rate. And I went home into my kitchen, and I started making this. I could not believe that my pain had been so affected by this plant, that I had gone from a level eight to a level two almost instantaneously when I had taken a puff of it, and that no doctor up to this point had ever bothered to mention to me that cannabis was an option. How was that even possible? So I thought, what is it going to take for a doctor to be able to recommend cannabis effectively for treating patients just like me? So I made this in the kitchen, and I had the oil, and I'm looking at it, and I'm trying it, and I thought, okay, 
what is it going to take so that a doctor feels comfortable actually recommending this for its patients? So what are the keys that are going to be there? The first thing is there's going to have to be lab tests associated with this product. If you do not have a lab test associated with the medicine, you do not know how many milligrams of each cannabinoid is in there, you don't know what you're taking, you don't know how to take it, and you can't be consistent. And frankly, a doctor's only going to want to prescribe or recommend something that can be done consistently and accurately. The next thing is the doctor's going to have to do a, a very in-depth patient intake process because they're going to have to have all of the same questions that they would ask in treating any disease, but then they have to incorporate a set of questions that are specific for cannabis use in itself. The next thing is they're going to have to very well understand this plant and the properties of it. There are over 500 chemical compounds within the cannabis plant, and each one has its own medical potential within it. And so how they work and how they work together is very important that a medical professional understands when making this sort of recommendation. And the next thing is they're going to have to have a way of giving you specific dosing instru instructions for each disease that you're treating. So that once they do start this feedback loop, that they can see what's working and what's not working and refine the data and keep making it better and better. I'm a process engineer. Finding patterns and establishing with data is just the logical way to figure out something and turn it from a, uh, a, a plant into a medicine. So I went out next and I got a whole bunch of different varieties of cannabis and I was very excited. I made all these oils. I sent them out for lab results or lab testing and lo and behold, I sat down and I'm looking through all these labs and I'm like, what am I looking at? I have no idea what any of this means. I do not understand. I don't understand what beta caryophylline is. I don't know what alpha pine, I don't know what any of these different components are of this. So I need to get more education on this. Because the thing that's fascinating about cannabis is that it is really a pharmacy and a flower. Because you have all these different compounds within there, you know, everybody knows about THC and CBD. You hear about these in the press. There's the misnomer that one gets you high and one is the medicine. I would flip that and I would say one isn't of much value and the other one is really good medicine, meaning the THC. That's a different talk. But let's go ahead and stick with this. But you also have other cannabinoids in there like CBN. And CBN is the one that helps to make you sleepy. You have THCV, which we believe regulates the insulin uptake in the body. So there's all these other. You then have all these things called terpenes. Well, terpenes are what you taste and what you smell. And a terpene, for example, uh, in, in lavender, you have something that's called a linalool that's very calming. If you've ever picked up a, le a lemon and held it to your nose and smelled it and had that uplifting feeling that it gives you, that's limonene. That's also in cannabis. So we know that it has all these various components within it, and we have to see how they work together. I learned about something called the entourage effect. Now, this isn't uh, an actor with a bunch of fans hanging around him. This is how all the components of the plant work together. In the case of cannabis, the whole truly is greater than the sum of its parts. Because you can buy isolated where they just use one component of it, but it is not going to work anywhere as near as well as when you have all of the components together. So let's talk about a piece of chocolate cake. You could have your flour, your butter, your sugar, your eggs, your vanilla, your cocoa, all of the ingredients that go into a piece of, care of, of chocolate cake. But you certainly are not going to have had the experience of eating a piece of, of, of chocolate cake. And that is, in a nutshell, what the entourage effect is. So now we know that we have to have the whole plant so that we have this entourage effect. We know that doctors are going to be able to have to dose it correctly. But what is, in fact, a dose? Because people don't necessarily understand that. So what a dose is, is how much you take and how often you take it. If the doctor says, I want you to take two in the morning and two at bedtime, that's your dose. If the doctor says, I want you to take one three times a day, that's your dose. If they say take 10 milligrams in the morning and 20 milligrams in the evening, that's your dose. Now, what is a therapeutic dose? A therapeutic dose is how much is required for you to accomplish what your objective is. For example, if your objective is to sleep eight hours a night, 
the amount of cannabis that is required to get you asleep, keep you asleep, and allow you to wake up after eight hours feeling refreshed, that is your therapeutic dose. If you're suffering chronic pain, it's not the amount that knocks you on your butt. It's not the amount that gets you high. It's the amount that gets your pain under control to a point where you are still a fully functional member of society. That is the therapeutic dose. It's not just how much you can use. So now let's take a look at what is not a dose, all right? Because I hear all the time from people, I'll say, how much are you taking? And they'll say, oh, I take a one-to-one, -one, or I take a one-to-five, or I take a 20-to-one. Well, that's great, that's a ratio. That tells me how much you have one component is in relation to another, but it doesn't tell me what they are, it doesn't tell me how much concentration of each one is in, it just tells me the relationship between two different molecules. It's also not the number of drops. If I say, how much do you take, and you say four drops, or two drops, or five drops, if I don't know how many milligrams are in the whole, I have no way of knowing how much is in an individual drop. And then lastly, the most important in the United States in particular, where we are not on the metric system, however the medical community is, a milligram and a milliliter are not interchangeable. <laughs> one is a weight and one is a volume. So you need to know how many milligrams of the cannabinoids or whatever the chemical compound is within the volume of whatever the product is, whether it's an oil or a cookie or a Rice Krispie treat, all right? So let's take a look here at a theoretical therapeutic dose. Now I want to say right here before I go any further, this is not a particular dose for, or therapeutic dose for anything for anybody. It's strictly for the purposes of this demonstration. And I have it up here and I want you to also, before I go any further, I want to say that no doctor in their right mind would ever recommend somebody start out at a dose this high. You always want to start out very, very, very low and increase slowly until you reach your therapeutic dose. But let's take a look at this for a minute. We have a recommendation here of a THC dominant medicine that from the doctor. They want you to take a 25 milligrams a day, divide it into two separate doses with one of five milligrams in the morning when you get up and 20 milligrams about one hour before bed. They want it to have several of these different terpenes in it if possible and they want you to take it sublingually, which means under the tongue, thus the picture of the person sticking their tongue out at you, a little bit rolling stones. So I'm going to take that and say, okay, now that you've got this, how do we take that information and convert that over to going to a dispensary to buy a product to match it? So I'm going to take this as a typical infused oil because it's sublingual. We need to use a tincture or something that can be done under the tongue. And let's take a look and do a blow up of the label. All right. So this, on this label, I'm going to look along with you. It says it's an extra strength THC product. It has 30 milligrams weight of THC within each milliliter, the volume. So 30 milligrams per milliliter tells you how much is in there. We also know that this is going to be about one milligram per drop because we know that a rule of thumb is when you have an infused oil, it's approximately 28 to 30 drops per milliliter. So in this case, because it's 30 milligrams per milliliter, it's going to be about one milligram per drop. So in order to achieve the five milligrams in the morning, it's going to be five drops. And for the 20 milligrams before bedtime, you're looking at about three quarters of a dropper or 0.75 milliliters to achieve that. And that will give you precisely what the doctor has recommended for you. So I encourage you when you leave here to go to your local dispensaries and look at the myriad of products that are available on the shelves today. They come in all forms. They come in capsules and waters and all sorts of other things. And take a look and at, go up to the bud tender and ask to show you what some of these products are. You have the benefit now of a regulated market, which means that you now have proper labeling, so everything is easier to tell what is in it, which really makes eases the way for you to begin your exploration of what cannabis products may work for what ails you. And I just, one last word of caution, remember always start very low 
and increase slowly. Thank you.